vlog, 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 Friday. It's vlog Friday. And it's a special Friday. Whoa! Sorry. It's a special vlog Friday because I am busy cleaning house. My sister Cindy and my niece Anna are coming. I'm so excited and I'm cleaning house. And Daryl said, you better get in there and do that vlog Friday. And I go, yeah, I look like a crazy woman. You should see my shirt. I'm filthy. But I wanted to get this vlog Friday done because I want to get back to my schedule. And you know, I am not sure if it's me or the enemy. I, I'm not sure. But whenever I make a commitment like that, like I'm going to do Vlog Friday, honest and earnestly, every Friday, something always comes up. That's just how it works. So forgive the appearance, forgive the cleaning supplies. And let me just talk to you real quickly about um, an important lesson that I learned recently. And um, it really pricked my heart. One of the things about loving your neighbor, right? Jesus was talking to the multitudes and a rich young ruler came up and said, what's the, most, what's the most important commandment? And Jesus said, to love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. And uh, we see in First John, how can you uh, love your brother who you can't see and how do you love God who you can't see? If you don't love your brother, you don't love God. And brother there is, is meaning part of the body of Christ. But neighbor is still very important. And of course, we've got the, you know, Good Samaritan story. Jesus teaching us that being neighborly and what neighbors do for one another. And who is my neighbor, right? We've done that in Sunday school. Who is my neighbor? Well, I want to tell you a story about um, someone who is actually my neighbor. <laughs> I didn't have to make it up. It's actually my neighbor. So Daryl and I, in 2003, we moved into a new house. And it was a dream house. And it was a miracle that we got that house. It's not a house that we could afford. It's not a house that we'd even looked at. It. We went there and looked at it eventually before we bought it. But it, we'd never gone into that neighborhood because we knew we couldn't afford it. It was out of our price range. And um, unfortunately, the builder, she had, was experimenting. She had never been a builder before. And she was having struggles moving her inventory. And she gave us a killer deal. I mean, she said she brought her checkbook to the loan table. I mean, she really, the closing table, she had to bring her checkbook. But she gave us a miraculous deal. And we loved that home. It was wonderful. We entertained literally thousands of people in that home. So when we first moved in, it was a nice neighborhood. We'd been in a duplex where there'd been shootings and drug deals gone down. And, you know, we had been in a really, not ghetto, but it was a rough little neighborhood. So we'd moved into this nice, posh neighborhood. And I told Daryl, you know, wow, we're going to have to keep the lawn up. We're going to have to take care of making sure the windows are clean. There's a lot of cleaning that's got to be done. And it would just be me doing it because we've never had a cleaning help, cleaning lady or anything like that. So... We were there in our new home and uh, living the dream. And the people across the street from us um, are in the trucking business. And they were all immigrants from India. And it was five generations. And they lived in the house across the street. There were about 20 of them. And it's a large house, but about 20 of them. And they had these two 18-wheelers. And uh, every night, they would park those 18-wheelers on the street in front of our house. Every night. And uh, I went to the covenant, you know, because when you live in a posh neighborhood, posh does. When you live in a posh neighborhood, they have an HOA covenant. So I pulled out that covenant, and I was looking at it, and I was going, hmm, you're not supposed to park anything on the street, much less an 18-wheeler. I'm talking about the giant 18-wheelers where I'd get up in the morning and I'd open my curtains and there'd be only truck. I couldn't see anything in my, just truck. So <laughs> uh, I got angry because, you know, I got my rights. All right. I have my rights. And uh, Daryl was getting angry. He's like, these are against the rules. So I looked on the Lenexa city site and Lenexa didn't allow you to park on the street a vehicle, much less 18-wheelers weren't supposed to be in the neighborhood, according to Lenexa city laws 18 wheelers weren't even supposed to be parked in our neighborhood and this went on for a few weeks and we were still new homeowners still unpacking still trying to you know 
get our bearings in our new house. And uh, every um, Monday night, Jamie, our daughter-in-law, and Lance, our son, would come over for dinner. That was our thing. And we would watch some TV show or spend time together every Monday night. And so the first Monday night, we just said something briefly about the 18-wheelers. But the second Monday night, I was letting Jamie and Lance know that I was really upset about those 18-wheelers. Well, the third Monday night, I'd had it. And I didn't want to have a confrontation with the family from India. So I was going to do something like just call the city police or call the HOA and tell them there's an eight, two 18-wheelers parked on our street. One of them almost every night. Not all of them, but most of them. Uh, one was there almost every night. And um, it was irritating me. And it was wrong. And you could hear them cranking up in the morning to, to go do their deliveries. And so we would hear that diesel and they'd have to let it run forever. And I was so angry and so frustrated. And I was like, I am not going to deal with this. I'm going to call the police or I'm going to call the city of Lenexa or I'm going to just call the HOA. But this is wrong. This is breaking the rules. It's very inconvenient for me. And I'm not going to live here with an 18-wheeler that sometimes blocked my driveway for me to get out. That's no joke. And um, the fourth week they came, Lance and Jamie came to our house and were eating dinner. And I was complaining to Lance about it was wrong. It was illegal. They were breaking the rules. I was the one suffering from it. I mean, I was really upset. And he just sat there and listened and nodded. He's a good listener. He's empathetic. Nodding. Mm -hmm. And then he doesn't say anything. And I go, so that, you know, what do you think about that? And Lance goes, wow, you know, Terry, I'll know that you're really a Jesus follower the day that you walk across that street and you ask them for a ride in that 18-wheeler. It was phenomenal. I'll know that you're a real Jesus follower when you walk across that street and ask them for a ride. Because loving my neighbors isn't about keeping rules or covenants or, you know, forcing people to fit into the law. You know, this wasn't a big law. I'm not talking about someone <laughs> holding someone in captivity, of course. But this was petty on my part. And the minor inconvenience, I was getting ready to make a big deal out of it. And maybe even cause them financial harm or citation of some sort. And they're from India. They had, they had been here probably about 10 years. So, I knew that Lance's advice had hit the target. It had hit my heart dead center. I almost gasped. So I chewed on it for a while, and then about three days later, maybe four days later, our neighbors got a brand new truck, a brand new 18-wheeler, just the cab, you know, just the front part, not the whole trailer. And they drove it in, and Daryl and I walked over. We didn't go for a ride, but we did ask to be given a tour. It was bright, shiny, blue. It was gorgeous. It's like a whole apartment in there. <laughs> you can do everything. You can cook a hamburger in there. That's huge. So they had this new cab, and um, they gave us a tour, and we made good friends with them. They didn't have a lot of friendly people in America. <laughs> they didn't meet a lot of friendly people. And their mom, who was my age, the senior of the family, she and I just fell in love with each other, the Bassey family. They were really good neighbors. And we lived there for 17 years. And there are a lot of times that they just saved us. Like Daryl would be out of town and I would come in to the garage and forget to close the garage door. And 10, 1030 at night, there'd be a knock at my door saying, you forgot to close the garage door. So I, oh my goodness, all there by myself, you know. I'd go close the garage door, give them a hug. I helped their kids apply for universities and grade a lot of English papers. And they're good writers. They're good thinkers. The kids were brilliant. There were three sons, mom and dad, three sons. Those three sons were married and each one of them had children. There were aunts and uncles, but they were loving, good neighbors. And I thank God for them every day. 
They watched out for the house, over the house when we were gone to Lithuania. We never had to worry about anything. We knew nobody would ever step foot on our property wrongly because the Bassey family would watch out for that, for us and for our property. Pulling in trash cans. They loved Mindy when we got our new dog. They'd come over. The kids would come over and say, can Mindy come out and play? And I'd let Mindy go play with them. <laughs> I've known those kids all their lives. Now they're getting ready to go to college. <laughs> Oh, we decided in August to sell that big home. It was too big for us, and it was time to move, and we felt the Lord quickening us and and prompting us to move. So we were thinking about how do we get it on the market, and what do we do to sell it, and what needs to be done, and who do we call, and we didn't know a real estate agent. We were just kind of confused. I was cleaning, packing and there we had a brand, uh, a picnic table that Lance had built for us when he was in high school. And it had served us so well. It's a beautiful picnic table. And we had painted and it was really solid, really well made. And um, I said, Lance, do you want your picnic table back? Because we don't know where we're going, but I don't think we're going to have room for a picnic table. It was giant. And he said, no, just give it away. We don't, we don't need it. So Daryl went across the street because the Bassey family has such a big family. And he said, would you guys like this picnic table? And they said, yeah. So we carried it over there. And the Bassey girls, the daughters-in-law, the three daughters-in-law, they were like, why are you giving away the picnic table? And I said, well, we're thinking about moving. That's, and they cried. And Mrs. Bassey cried. And they, I said, yeah, we're thinking about moving. So they said, uh, we don't want you to move. And I said, well, the house is too big. The yard is too big. And we just need to downsize. And they understood that. About a month later, we were cleaning and having some painting done on the house. And the girls came over, the three daughters-in-law, and they asked if we were still going to sell. And I said, yeah. And they said, we would like to buy the house. And I was like, oh, that's so sweet. That's sweet. I didn't know what we were going to ask for. I was going to look it up and do some research. Again, we didn't have a real estate agent. And I said, that's precious. So they asked me how much we were asking for. And I said, I'm, I'm not sure yet. We haven't come up with any numbers. They went back home. And the next day, the men came. And that's how I knew they were serious. And the men said, we want to buy your house. No real estate agent on either side. No fees. They wanted to pay cash for our house. <laughs> so I looked it up and I came up with a number that I believed was fair. We prayed over it. I told them the number and they wrote out a check and bought our house. <laughs> they bought our house. Then they came back the next day and bought all of our furniture. All of our furniture. Paid cash for everything. And told us we could stay in that house as long as we needed. That we didn't have to move. They just would like to get in by January 1. And this was like September. Lance said, You know, I can't help but think that in the infinite and glorious mind of Jesus... He had those Indian neighbors in mind when he spoke those words to the multitude and to the rich young ruler. He already knew them. He already knew that Daryl and I would live across the street from people from a distant land. They were a twinkle in his eye, as Lance said. I think you can figure out the story would go on a lot differently, right? If we had started out complaining and enforcing the rules and showing the HOA covenant and showing the Lenexa city rules, calling the police, our story would have been a lot different. We had a loving, wonderful relationship with those neighbors. And God knew that one day they were going to buy our house and then let us live there for months without rent. And because they bought our house, we were able to buy this house, which is the right house for us. Four miles south. <laughs> Four miles south of where we used to live. 
Sometimes it's hard to love our neighbors, whoever that neighbor is. It might be somebody in your family. It might be your spouse. But when Jesus tells us to love our neighbors, he has the long-term picture in mind. He knows what he's going to do in those people and through those people. And he knows what he wants to do in us and through us. He wants to bless us. And sometimes neighbors are hard to love. The Bassey family wasn't. But whoever it is in your life that is your neighbor, that God is calling you to love unconditionally, to forgive unconditionally, just the way you've been forgiven, and to embrace unconditionally. God will give us the grace to do that, won't he? And then later on, down the road, we look back with 2020, and we see, oh, Lord, you had such a magnificent plan. Thank you for not allowing me to screw it up. And thank you, Lance, for letting the Holy Spirit use you and speak truth so gently, so kindly, so lovingly into my life. So, today's message, love your neighbor. Because they might buy your house later on for cash. Not really. Not really. Kind of sounded like that. No, but God knows what he wants to do in the two lives, in all of our lives. Okay, well, that's been Vlog Friday. I better get back to housekeeping. I've got some vacuuming to do. Oh, love you. Blessings to you. Please give me a thumbs up or if you want a thumbs down. I'd love to see comments if you want to comment on this or email me, text me. Let me know how you're doing. I hope you have a great weekend. God bless. Bye-bye.